I have been versus debating multiple years of my life and played Tekken even more years of my life. Like, all of them. And every time I've combined Tekken and versus debating in a video, my stats for the verse have always been very consistent, whether a character wins or loses. And sometimes people who don't pay attention will ask where I get all these stats from. So now that the Mishima saga has come to a close, I think it'd be the perfect time to discuss how powerful the Tekken verse is. Now these are my own thoughts and you're allowed to disagree. Just be sure to watch the entire video before commenting because I will be addressing multiple arguments to the statements that I make. These are my final thoughts on the verse, at least until the next game comes out, and this video will be full of all the new information that I've gathered. Hope you enjoy. Now when it comes to strength, there are different levels or tiers of power in the verse, but with speed there's only one. One consistent tier that almost everyone in the entire cast can scale to, and I'll explain why later. Anyone who's seen my versus debates involving Tekken characters knows that I calculated the top speed of the verse to be around Mach 5000, but oh boy has that changed with some recent calculations. Behold this calculation by Thomas the Hype Engine, which I horribly butchered on another site but I'm going to do correctly here. I, I still deeply apologize for that. <laughs> but anyways, during a scene in Tekken 7, Kazuya fires a laser and shoots down Dr. Abel's weapon. By using the distance between the satellite and the planet, the thickness of the beam, and the orbit of the satellite as a time frame, Thomas was able to find out that Kazuya's laser can fire at 67 times the speed of light. This does seem odd at first glance because it appears the laser takes 7 whole seconds to reach the satellite, but in reality the shot from the building and the shot from space are happening simultaneously. As for the proof, you can see the shockwave from when Kazuya fires off the building appear and disappear in the space shot before the laser finally shows up. That, along with the fact that you can hear the startup sound of the laser in both shots, proves that the time frame of the laser being fired is this long. And this beam is something in the series that many of the characters can casually dodge. Except Combat. Thus, the final speed of the Tekkenverse is 67 times the speed of light. I hope you enjoyed Thomas's calculation, it was very well done. But that's all he has to do with this video, anything else in this video is all on me. Alright, now it's time for the power. In order to find the strongest, we must first find the weakest. So who is the fodder of the Tekkenverse? A character that everyone can beat. The answer is Jack. The Mishimas can defeat them, Raven can beat him, King can beat him, even sweet little Ling Xiao Yu can defeat him. So how powerful could they possibly be? Well, since Jack robots get much stronger with each version, let's start at the earliest version with an impressive feat, Gun Jack. And ho ho ho, what a feat for the bottom of the verse. The entire landscape along with multiple mountains were completely destroyed in that explosion, which means it's at least island level. And of course as the versions progress that slowly leads up to Jack 6 who is able to completely shatter a meteor the size of the one that wiped out the dinosaurs, putting him at country level. This means pretty much anyone that can beat him is around the same. But remember, being a certain level doesn't always mean you can destroy said thing. It could also just mean you're able to defeat someone who can. For example, just because sweet little Ling Xiaoyu is able to destroy a country level jack robot doesn't mean she's able to destroy a country herself, because I doubt we're going to be seeing her split Mexico or anything. But it simply just means she's able to handle opponents who are country level. Watch out, Aku! Sweet little Ling Xiaoyu is coming for you! Ha 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 ha! So, Tekken's low tier is officially large island to country level. Now for the mid tier. A mid tier character is one who's above all the low tiers, but still not enough to defeat the high tiers when they're at full power. And no wasting time here, the character is Lars. Lars, 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 Lars. This character right here completely screwed up the entire verse in Tekken 6. He's the reason why every character scales to each other in terms of speed and of low tier power. Because in Tekken 6's story mode, you play as Lars and fight everyone. Literally everyone. So thus, everyone scales to the Jacks because Lars beat the Jacks, and they're able to put up a fight against Lars. And even though they were holding back and didn't transform, Lars was still able to fight against the Mishimas. So even without any impressive feats of his own, he still managed to claim the mid-tier status, leaving Tekken's official mid-tier stats at unknown, but higher than the low tiers. Congratulations, Lars. You're still useless. And now for the high tier, or as I like to call it, the Mishima tier, featuring Azazel. This quote explains everything. I hope you realize what'll happen if you two fight. 
If the world can be destroyed by a mere father-son quarrel, then so be it. <laughs> hey, 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 don't laugh. Even I used to shrug this off despite how desperately true I wanted it to be. I mean, they flat out say it right there. Wong and several other characters say it in Tekken 6's scenario campaign. Zafina's prophecy revolves around it. The entire plot of Tekken 6 revolves around defeating Azazel before he destroys the planet. But, but, they kept using that one word, world, 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 world. That could mean anything. It could mean the population, the surface of the planet, the economy. Oh yeah, because Azazel, some devil gene dragon from a higher plane of existence is gonna go after your taxes. Oh, <laughs> but Tekken 7, Tekken 7, they finally did it. Near the beginning of Tekken 7, Nina Williams recaps the battle between Jin and Azazel and specifically emphasizes the difference between the planet and the world. Jin defeated Azazel and saved the planet, but could the world really be considered saved, in reference to the war still going on? So after all this, so many character confirmations of this, so many plot confirmations of this, and now Nina Williams hammering down the confirmation of this, I think it's completely safe to say that Tekken is possibly planet level or full-on planet level at its highest tier. We have literally every ounce of evidence imaginable for the Tekkenverse to be planet level, except for visual, but hey, that didn't stop the One Punch Man verse from being planet level. I mean, this isn't Dragon Ball Z, they don't have any spare planets to blow up and wish back with the Dragon Balls. So Tekken at its best is planet level and 67 times the speed of light. How about that? Hmm, if I had to compare it to another verse for reference, I'd go with... Um, Frieza Saga Dragon Ball. You know, around the time when more planet busters are starting to show up, the verse finally reached faster than light speeds, and the lower tiers were starting to catch up. Yeah, I know, the Saiyan Saga had Vegeta as a planet buster, but he was the only one, and they were only at sub-relativistic speeds at the time, so Frieza Saga is definitely a better fit. And remember, this is Frieza Saga. Even current Krillin could solo the Tekken verse now. Whew, and finally there's one more big, 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 big thing you're probably all wondering about. Akuma! Where does he fit in? How is this possible? His best feat in Street Fighter is only island level. He should barely be able to scratch the Jack Robots. The answer to that is simple. It's just a different version of Akuma. It's Tekken's version, not Street Fighter's version. No matter what, if there's a crossover, you always split up versions. Otherwise, Little Mac from Punch-Out would be universal thanks to Super Smash Brothers. Oh hey, you know what this means? It means you actually have a faster than light planet level Akuma to use that's actually important, and not some little dinky DLC cameo like in Azura's Wrath. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, it was a lot of work. Leopold the Brave, out. Oh yeah, Wong also said the Devil Gene had limitless power and Jinpachi could destroy all of existence. If for whatever reason you thought I was winking in this video, be glad I didn't include that. <laughs>